So we also have to talk about relationships between the organisms. So when you look at a food web or a food chain, the relationships in the food web and the food chain or in the trophic level is consumption and passage of energy. So you're basically having a relationship of predator prey. However, sometimes organisms can actually interact and they don't have to kill each other and eat each other. There are these relationships called symbiotic relationships. For example, say something is good for animal one and good for animal two. So they're helping each other out in a way where they both benefit. This is called mutualism or mutualistic relationship. You can have a real world example like a boy and a girl are dating and they realize, God, I hate you. We should break up. And they both decide this and they break up and they tell all their buddies, oh, the breakup was mutual. We both wanted it. It was good for one and good for the other. You can also have something that's good for one and where the other animal is neither positively or negatively affected and it's just kind of neutral. This is called commensalistic or commensalism. One of them benefits from having the other, but the other doesn't really seem to care if they're there or not. Maybe the thing is so tiny and insignificant that it doesn't help it, or they just don't mind that they're there and they just kind of accept that they kind of bounce around and get a little benefit from them. But if they left, nothing happens. So if you have a bird in a tree, a bird gets protection and can build a nest and kind of gets a home from the tree, but the tree doesn't care if the bird leaves. If the bird goes to another tree, the tree doesn't get jealous. It's just like, okay, well that thing left. It wasn't really helping me, but it wasn't hurting me. So it's neutral. The last one is good for one and bad for the other. This is parasitic or parasitism. You probably know this one because you know what a parasite is. You know, tapeworms and mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, all this stuff. This is all stuff that is technically parasites. This is when they are going to benefit from the other creature being around. And then the other creature would prefer they not be around because they are negatively affected. Here's a couple examples. Uh, for mutualism, you have clownfish and sea anemone. 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 Whatever. It's Nemo and his house. There you go. Clownfish keeps it clean and kind of gets some protection from it and then they both enjoy having each other around. Another good one is bees and flowers. Bees actually get the pollen from the flower to make their honey, but then they actually transfer that pollen all over the place because they can get it to move by kind of rubbing all over it and it gets on their legs. They can move it faster or further sometimes than the wind, so it helps the flower get their pollen out. Commensalism, we had our bird and a tree example. That was good. You also have something like, for example, in Africa, you have these wildebeest that always have these little bitty tiny birds on them. As the wildebeest runs through, it stirs up bugs and it kind of like moves stuff around. So these birds just kind of hitch a ride and hang out and wait for something to get stirred up. And then they can dive in and get some of those bugs. This dude has five birds on his back. If one day he woke up and no birds came and laid on his back, he would not care. He's like, okay, I'm going to continue to be a wildebeest and do wildebeest things. Finally, parasitism. We got ticks, people, tapeworms, and dogs. And we mentioned mosquitoes. So let's make a quick differentiation between mosquito because we know that mosquito was kind of biting a human, eating it. So we would sometimes put it above a human on a food chain because it's passage of energy from a human to the mosquito. So here's the distinction. The big thing here is something has to hunt and kill another organism for its energy. So when the mosquito bites you, or the tick, or the flea, they're slowly kind of sapping your energy. They're getting a little bit of energy from you, but they're not necessarily going to kill you. Now, don't count like Lyme disease and West Nile and malaria. That's diseases that are carried by the mosquito or by the tick or whatever. It's not the animal actually killing you. Actually, the mosquito prefer you not die because if it bites you and you get West Nile and die, it no longer has a continuous supply of blood. And competition is the last relationship. Competition is any organisms fighting over a resource. So like in a football game or a basketball game, they're fighting to get more points. The point is the resource. So for lions, maybe you have lions fighting over food, water, land, territory like the alpha male wants to have his own giant territory females I mean for a male lion a bunch of females is actually a resource having lots of lionesses in your pride can bolster your pride make your pride more powerful so they actually want females as a resource remember humans mess things up 
but you could almost kind of say that money is the main resource that humans compete for because you could buy food, you could buy housing and land, you could buy territory and water. And I guess if you're, you know, really, really wealthy, you can probably use that wealth to get females that you may not have gotten if you didn't have that wealth. So these are the relationships. Uh, you can go hunt and kill. You can compete. You can have mutualism, which is good, good. Commensalism, which is good, neutral. Or parasitism, which is good and negative. Remember, these three are called symbiotic relationships. These last two are not purely positive and negative stuff. It's just kind of a relationship that they actually do in the wild. Remember, don't label predation good and negative, even though technically, I guess, if a lion kills a gazelle, it's good for the lion, bad for a gazelle, but it's not slowly sapping the energy. 